Amen, children. Happy Easter. Jesus is alive. Woo. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Death has lost its victory and the grave has been denied. Jesus lives forever. He's alive. is he the curse of sin is broken we have perfect liberty the lamb of god is risen he's alive he's alive we sing hallelujah jesus is alive death has lost and the grave has been denied Jesus lives forever He's alive He's alive He's the Alpha and Omega The first and last is He The curse of sin is broken We have perfect liberty Come on. The Lamb of God is risen Boys and girls, happy Easter! Now what is Easter? Is it about bunnies? Is it about opening up the Easter eggs here to find out whether it's chocolate? Is there chocolate or candies inside? Or maybe for some of us, Easter is all about Easter egg hunt. What do you think children? No, of course not. Easter is about God's love. The Bible memory verse for all of us to learn today is taken from the book of John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And that's what Easter is all about. It's about God's love. That God loves you and God loves me. God loves all of us so much that He gave His one and only. So to explain what Easter is all about, we are going to use the acronym EGG to help us to remember. The first letter is letter E, but before I reveal what letter E stands for, listen to this story. There was once a big, big rock named Bunny. He was a big and strong compared to all his other rock friends. Bunny stood out as awkward. The other rocks were easy to crack and more portable than Bunny. When they went to the quarry, the mason would choose all other rocks except Hey, pick me! I'm big and strong! shouted Buddy. But they found Buddy too big and of no use. The rest of his rock friends were used in different ways. Some were used as sculptures in the museums, the fountains in the town square, and the little stone made of beautiful garden landscapes. Buddy had a good friend, Rocky, who dreams of being a rock star. Hey Buddy, one day we will reach our dreams and be useful. Rocky would sing to Buddy. You know something Buddy. I want nobody, nobody but you. I want nobody, nobody but you. This often cheered Buddy up. Yeah Rocky, there's no one like me. I am made for something as big as me. Days and weeks pass, one by one. Buddy's friends were brought away to be shaped and used. Even Rocky was taken away by the Rolling Stones to start a rock band. But Big Buddy was still in the quarry and he felt lonely. One Friday, two fierce looking soldiers stepped in the quarry and shouted, We want a big rock! Give us the biggest rock you have! They noticed Buddy, pointed it to him and shouted, that's the rock! The fierce soldiers pushed Buddy onto a wagon. Buddy was nervous. 
where were the soldiers going to bring him? But he was brought to a tomb. He saw many people crying over a body that was wrapped up. They seemed to love the person very much. They said their last goodbyes and rolled Big Buddy over the tomb. They even poured hot wax over Buddy to make sure no one can roll him away. I thought I was going to do something great. How did I end up here guarding a dead man? cried Buddy. On Sunday morning, Buddy was awoken by a bright light. There appeared an angel. Hey Buddy, roll away because Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords has risen. The dead man inside the tomb is the King and Lord of all and he is risen? How can that be since I have been here the whole night? Buddy thought. But Buddy used all his might to roll himself away from the, with the help of the angel. Buddy was shocked. There's nobody in the tomb. Some women came and they cried out, He's not here. He is risen. Come and see. Buddy rolled himself a bit more for the woman to go in. There was great rejoicing because Jesus has risen. Buddy realized for the first time how important he was on a Sunday morning when he rolled away from the mouth of the tomb to reveal that Jesus is alive. He was the stone that rolled away in history and he is mentioned every year during Easter. Buddy found his great purpose. So the first letter, E, stands for empty. The tomb is empty on Easter Sunday because Jesus has risen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, the tomb is E, empty. This brings me to the next letter G, which stands for good news. Easter is about the good news Jesus brings. About 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He grew in wisdom, stature, and in favor with God and men. He was very kind and helpful. He was no ordinary man. He is the Son of God. He made the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear. He raised the dead. Calm the storm, and best of all, he loved children. Many people followed Jesus, but some were envious and upset about him. They captured him, beat him, and nailed him to the cross. Jesus went to the cross to sacrifice himself for us. Jesus died on the cross on Good Friday. Why? Because of our sins. What is sin? Sin is every bad thing that we do. Sin is also not doing the things that we should do. And all have sinned. Let's have this dirty water represent sin in our lives. God does not sin, and He cannot live with people who do sin. The consequence of sin is living forever without God, death. God loves us very much, and He prepared a solution for our sin problem. He knew that someone would have to pay the price. So, He sent His sinless Son, Jesus Christ, to earth as a man to die on the cross in our place and pay the penalty we deserve. Three days later, on Easter Sunday, Jesus rose from the dead so that we can have new life. He conquered sin and death. Jesus cleanses us from all sins and poor. This is the good news, the never-ending love of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Hallelujah! Let's move on to what EGG stands for. E. We learn that E stands for empty tomb. The tomb is empty because Jesus is alive. And the next letter, G. G stands for good news. Now, the good news is not just for children. The good news is for everyone, both young and old, because it is the truth that took place more than 2,000 years ago. We learn from the good news that all of us have sinned, and sin separates us from God, and the result of sin is death. 
living a life forever without God. On the cross, Jesus saved us from sin and death and offers us the next G, a gift, the best gift of all, the gift of salvation. But a gift is not a gift until you've accepted it. I accepted the gift of salvation when I was seven. I heard the good news and I said, Jesus, come into my heart. And I received Jesus into my life. Right now, I want to invite you to receive this gift from Jesus by faith. If you say, teacher, I want this gift too. I want you to stretch out your hands in front of the screen and receive it by faith. Now close your eyes with me and say this prayer. Dear God, thank you for loving me. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. You took away sin and death so that I can have life eternally with you. Forgive me of all my sins and make me clean. I welcome you into my life, Jesus. Come and be my Lord, my Savior, my best friend. Help me to live for you. I receive you and accept you into my heart. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And all God's children say, Amen. Welcome to God's family. You are now a child of God if you've said that prayer. What else took place on the cross? Not only did Jesus take away sin and death, the Bible also tells us that He took away our griefs, our sorrows, our sickness and disease. When I was 10, my mom passed on with cancer and I felt really, really stressed by it. I became a very fearful girl. Sometimes I will wake up in the middle of the night and I feel so anxious. And then I developed eczema. I had eczema all over my body, my face, my ears, my fingers, my arms, my legs. They were everywhere. I felt so ashamed. I always put on long pants and long sleeve shirts to cover them up. Then one day I prayed to God. I said, Jesus, on the cross, you took sin and death. You also took sickness and diseases and all my sorrows and all my sadness. Today I give them to you. Come and heal me. And then Jesus did. He healed me. Today you don't see eczema on my face, on my body, my arms, and all of no. Jesus healed me and Jesus can do the same for you. So if you are sick in your body today, whatever it is, it could be asthma, eczema, I want you to place your hands over the parts that you are sick. If you have a sore throat, place it over your throat. If you have eczema, place it wherever it is. If you have a headache, put your hand over your head. If you have worries, anxiety, tormenting thoughts, I want you to put your hands over your heart. Let me pray for you. Dear God, we want to lift up all these children into your hands. God, you know them by name. By your stripes, they are healed from every sickness and disease. All who came to you were healed. We believe and receive your healing in our lives today, body, soul, and spirit. By your stripes, we are healed. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and all God's people say, Amen. I want nobody, nobody but you. I want Nobody, nobody but you. Happy is the day for you, 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 you. Thank you for watching Harvest Kids Online. Do follow, like, share, and subscribe to Harvest Kids YouTube channel, Instagram, and Facebook. See you again next week, same time.